Hello, everyone. Editing Christina here, coming at you from my little computer setup here before I do my voiceover. So I have a little story to tell to you all before we get into today's video. As you can see from the title, this is Mail Art Week. That wasn't always my plan. I did have a video plan where I would show you five really easy ways to step up your envelopes. And so I started filming. And what you're going to see today is the first idea. And I started going along and then I thought, oh, this really isn't a really simple idea. This is just a full on mail art. And then I'm like, it's okay. I've still got four ideas. I will show the four ideas. So then I go into the second envelope idea. Sure enough, it is not a simple one either. So that's going to be a separate video. And then I went on to the third idea and it happened again. I just you guys, I can't help myself. I want to uh, just take every envelope to its utmost potential, I guess. I don't want to keep it simple. So anyway, my one video turned into four videos and you're going to be seeing a new envelope every day this week. And then on Friday in my live stream at 11 a.m., Mountain Time uh, here at YouTube, you will see me create my fifth mail art envelope for the week. So come back every day this week. Um, I'll probably be posting in the evening just because I wasn't planning on doing so many videos this week. So it's going to take me a little longer to edit and get them up. So uh, here we go. Mail art week. Let's get going. Okay. So the idea behind this first envelope is I wanted to create a really, really bold name. And I thought, what's an easy way to do that? Print it out on the computer and transfer it to the front of the envelope using graphite paper or pencil. So it's exactly what I've done. I've taken a four and a quarter by five and a half inch square, um, cutting it out. And before I printed it out on my computer, I added Darla's name really, really big. And I made sure that it was a lighter gray so that as I start tracing it and transferring the letters to my envelope that I can see where I've drawn. If it was black, it would be kind of hard to see. So I'm going to use some graphite paper for transferring her name to the envelope. I've got some Arteza graphite transfer paper. You could use any graphite paper or even just turn that printout over to the backside and scribble on it with a bunch of pencil. That'll just put graphite all over the back of the paper. And then as you start tracing the letters over top, it will press that pencil into the envelope and transfer the design. I'm using graphite paper. So I put the graphite paper face down onto my envelope and then taped the template over the top. So I'm using a red pencil just to go over the outlines of the letters. You could use this, you could use like a regular ballpoint pen, just something that's going to give you enough pressure to transfer the lines onto the envelope. Speaking of the envelope, this is a silver metallic envelope. I am not really sure where it came from. It may be from Simus' stamp. I'm not entirely sure but um, I'll put a link to some uh, silver metallic envelopes in the supplies if you're interested. So there's a Darla's name transferred with that graphite transfer paper. And now I'm going to use some acrylic paint pens to draw, uh, kind of fill in the letters of her name. So I'm using some acrylograph pens from Archer and Olive. That's mostly what I'm using today, but they didn't have quite the same colors as the stone postage stamps that I picked out. So I did decide to bring in one color of Karen Marker's pigment deco brush. And that's what I'm using here. As you can see, it has a very different texture. Um, you can really see the streaks, but as long as you can layer up the colors, you're going to be perfectly fine. But I found that the acrylograph works even better than the deco brush markers, uh, currently, um, it's easier to put down a lot of color with the deco brush markers, but, uh, and the, they, I think they have a better color selection. They definitely have more to choose from, but you know, you just double up on layers and you're fine. When it comes to the postage stamps, I adhered the vintage stamps using a glue stick. I, the forever stamp, that purple flowered one, I just put that in the corner. It's a sticker. So I have my postage on there and now I'm going to go around the letters with a white gel pen. 
And I just wanted to kind of clean up the edges and really emphasize the letters. And I was going to leave it just like this. This was the original idea for the for the envelope. And you could definitely do something like this. But as I was moving along, I kept thinking, this just needs something. It needs um, some little floral element or something like that. So I grabbed my pencil and I decided how fun would it be if there was a large stem of flowers that went in and out of the letters. So I've sketched on the main stem and then some additional smaller little offshoots, you know, for leaves or berries. And uh, we'll take it from there. So I sketched everything first because I wanted to make sure that I had it exactly where I wanted. And then I started coming in and building the first flower. I decided it would be a daisy. So I started uh, from each side and then uh, just kind of started filling in from there. And I did the outline of each petal first. And then I went around and started filling in all of the petals. Now, eventually I did switch to a different white marker. I switched to uh, a really inexpensive marker that I bought on Amazon, which really has been a trooper. For my last few em envelopes, I've needed some white acrylic pen, and kind of like a paint marker, and that white marker from Amazon has come in clutch. I've used it so many times and it just performs without any complaints. Some other, you know, pens in my mind almost have a personality and they can get kind of finicky and complainy and they don't want to do what you tell them to do. But that one from Amazon, sure enough, like whatever I do, it just, it's like, okay. And it does it. It's kind of amazing. So like I said, I wanted the flowers to go uh, kind of in and out of the letters. So I've got a, uh, the daisy kind of goes in front of the R, the berries, go in front of the A. And I just thought that looked really, really fun having uh, some additional uh, interest and kind of stems and things going through. The letters are so bold that uh, it looks really, really great that way. So I kept moving along and then I decided, you know what, it needs, a, it needs one more stem and I kind of wanted a little more interest right by the D. So I added one more little stem of berries and then brought in that white marker and went around the outer edge. I then brought a, an N4 Copic marker into the mix. I wanted some shadow kind of around the flowers and the letters. And this just gives it a little bit more of a finished look, adding a little bit of a shadow. It's one of my favorite ways to kind of step up an envelope. It's just add a shadow. Looks really, really neat that way. And I also added some shadows on the flower, kind of like underneath the middle of the, the daisy there. And just added some gray. As far as the street address goes, I used a T-square ruler from Simon Says Stamp to uh, draw on the lines, and I just needed two lines for her address. And then I grabbed uh, a pen. This is a black pen. It's a Pilot multi-ball pen. Uh, it's the one that I think is most similar, like my very favorite envelope addressing pen, which has been discontinued. So this is one that I find that is most similar. But I mean, it's, it's not the exact same. It's just very similar, but I thought I'd give it a try this time. So I very carefully uh, drew on or wrote on her street address, and then I'm going to flip the, ups the envelope upside down so I can work on the flap and I'll add in my PO box. So I've got my address on there now, and this envelope is pretty much done at this point, except um, the some of the acrylic paint markers that I used are not waterproof. So I needed to add some distress glaze. This is micro dist distress glaze from Tim Holtz, and it's what it does is it just puts like a a film over top of your surface wherever you apply it, and it makes it much more water resistant than it otherwise would would be. So I applied that with the mini round blending tool. You could also just use your fingertips to apply that. It doesn't really matter. But after you have it applied, then you're going to take some paper towel or a rag or something, and you're really going to buff that glaze into the paper. And that's going to take off any excess, and it's also going to help it dry faster. Um, on some surfaces, you'll notice that micro glaze will darken the paper because it's adding moisture. It's almost like it get, it's getting it wet. But as it dries, that, that color difference will go away. 
So here is my finished envelope for today. Um, I think it turned out so great and I kind of want to do some more envelopes like this, playing with different ways to add flowers and different stems and other things kind of like weaving in and out of the person's name. I think that's such a fun idea. So make sure you come back tomorrow. I will have another envelope for you. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. <music>